Hey, I'm Jason Stewart, and in this installment of VFX for the Cut, I want to cover a technique called clean plating. Have you ever had an actor in the back of a shot that the director wants to remove? What about a shot you want to split screen, but the actor is in a different spot and the take you want to use doesn't cover them up? Before you can add anything, you'll need a clean plate or reconstruction of the background with the thing you want to remove taken out. In a visual effects house, this might be done in nude with a little work in Photoshop. Some editors and VFX editors might do this with Mocha Pro's removal and mega play tools, but in many cases you can do this right in Media Composer without any additional software or plugins, and that's what we're going to do next. Let's get into it. We have our dancer here in front of a brick wall. Let's imagine that she's a background actor in a senior cutting and the director finds her too distracting and wants her removed before the cut can go to the producers. To do this, you'll need to create a clean plate of the section of the shot that she's in. First, we need to find a still frame or frames that are most ideal for the clean plating process. What makes a good frame? Ones where our dancer is blocking less of the wall are best. So when she moves back and is smaller in frame, or when she moves to the side to reveal more wall. There is no perfect frame here, so let's choose a couple. I like this frame since I can see the left side of this section, as well as this one since we have a piece of the right side. I'll add markers to both. Option and move up will copy our plate. I'll copy it twice. The way I like to create freeze frames is not to match frame and render a freeze, but to use the time warp tool so adjustments can be made later if needed. I'll drop a time warp effect on the top clip and park on this marker. I'll click this anchor button, and now when I change my speed to zero, this frame will not be shifted no matter how much I speed up or slow down the clip. I'll do the same with the other marker on the other clip. Now I need to choose a hero frame to create my clean plate. I feel like this one is good because I can see a bit of roof detail, which I want to be included in the painted frame. Our next job is to line up our top freeze frame with our hero frame. Option drag a 3D warp on the top shot so we can move it around. We will never get a perfect matchup, but we want to have the center of the two shots matching as well as possible so that we can remove the dancer. At first, we'll take the opacity down by half so we can see both images. I wouldn't recommend using corner pin, warp, or scaling here. This should be possible with a mix of the rotate and axis tools. We'll move the axis point to an area where we have a perfect match and rotate around that point so we can have more precision. We're rotating around the Z axis to go clockwise in the plus Z direction and counterclockwise in the negative Z. What we're looking for is sharp detail around the area we're focused on. If the outer edges go a little blurry, that could be due to a few factors, but it should not affect the outcome too much. Now I need to point out that this method won't remove the whole dancer because you see that they overlap just a little in here. So we'll remove as much as we can with big patches, then paint the rest in. In other tutorials, you've probably seen the Animat tool, so I won't go into a huge amount of detail about the tool, but we'll use it to create masking to remove most of our dancer now. I'm on the uppermost layer, so I'll draw a mask around the dancer that is visible. I want to remove this area from my top plate. So we'll set the mask to key out. A little feathering will help it. If I solo this track by command clicking in the track light, you'll see that we have a frame with a big hole in it. Now by dropping this frame with the hole on top of my other frame, we're pretty much going to obscure the dancer from the shot.
Here's that pesky piece of arm that we didn't get, so we'll have to paint it. This will be easiest to paint on if we combine two layers into one. So we'll segment overwrite the two freeze frame layers and collapse. This is similar to pre-compose and after effects if you're familiar with that. Now both frames are combined into one layer and we can option drag the paint effect from the image category on top of the collapse. The paint effect can do a lot of cool stuff, but we really only need the clone tool here. If you've used the clone stamp in Photoshop and other programs, this will look familiar. We'll option click a sample and paint that back over our spot here. We'll never recreate perfectly what's there in reality, but we can hide the rest of the dancer with a convincing patchwork of strokes. You can select any of these strokes and delete them, or move the splines and so forth, but this will be pretty easy work. Just sample from different areas so that you don't create an unnatural pattern. Okay, I'll say we're good on this. Now what? We made a still frame with no dancer. Do we need to do this for every frame? Luckily we have a static background with a shot without any parallax, so we just need to mask this plate over the top and track it back on the original shot. Let's option drag another 3D warp on top of our painted frame to handle the tracking. It's possible a one point tracker could do the job, but I think the camera has a bit of rotation to it. So in that case, we'll use at least two points. I'm actually gonna use the corner tracking feature to get the most available trackers I can, which is four. If you watch my screen replacement and media composer tutorial, you'll know I like to track one point at a time. In the screen replacement example, we tracked a rectangle. In this case, I just want as many tracks as I can get for accuracy. All right, now let's close the tracking window and see how it came out. Option drag another animat effect over the painted track, and let's line up in the position indicator over where the hero frame was chosen. Now I'll create a mask around that area that our dancer moves around in. Final touches would be feathering the edges of the animat and adjusting the shape of the mat to hide it as well as possible. That's essentially what we need to do with this. Remember, this can be used on split screens, removing actors and equipment, and other tasks as an editor or visual effects editor. That's clean plating with Media Composer. There's much more to come as we move from your Avid timeline into layer and node-based compositing and add more tools to your VFX toolkit. Thanks for watching.